I know. <clears throat> so, All right. Yeah. To start off, we already discussed um, like the difference between defaults and like rotations when you're constantly adjusting. But um, so you think Zach just boosts around the field too much? What, what kind of like data are you using? Like, well, the you have data, data. Yeah. yeah, but what about that data is telling you that he's just boosting around too much? The boost used while supersonic. And if it it's it's to the point where it's like for everyone else in the game it's like a hundred ish at most, um, like sixty average, but then like six hundred, five hundred, eight hundred, three hundred. So okay, there's there's something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> it's just been kind of a meme, and we've been able to work with it. And he's like, he's fast, he's getting the most boost, but like also. Yeah, that's and he's good. been adjusting. He's been really good about it. So we're figuring it out. But just keep just a fun nugget as we're going through it. Yeah, I'm the fun nugget. Um. <sighs> so since this is a win, and we're gonna go over the win first, the first thing that I'm gonna talk about is like what, where you guys are like. I'm gonna point out good spacing, and then I'm also gonna point out situations where you could be doing something else. Um, not necessarily that it's always better but just that it is something you should think about as an alternative because it can stop you guys from overcommitting or clean up your positioning and stop you guys from having um, this awkward scramble when you're moving into offense, trying to sustain offense, or going back to defense because it's usually where this happens. Usually a lot of the, the, um, the times that you're adjusting rotations a lot happens at this point in the field upward because mm-hmm. from here on, your, your one man as they're coming out isn't always out of the play. And that's fundamentally the biggest thing that changes between using defaults rigidly and using defaults flexibly. And when we're talking about like you just moving around up here, if you have the option to pass to your third man and your one man, it becomes more often viable to pass to your one man because your third man's a little bit too far back to get a good shot off that's going to be fast enough and strong enough to get to the back of the net before a defender shows up than your one man is. Um, okay. Also, your one man's less likely to be jockeyed. So that's the first place where you're going to see a lot of sh- situations where I talk about you, ch- you could change what you're doing in order to get a better play off or sustain offensive pressure or where you can cut rotations and have it be reasonable. The other thing is on defense, um, I, I can't draw right now and that sucks, but on defense, you can have, um, I might end up still drawing and it'll just be in the video. But on defense, you can have people, instead of rotating to back posts as often, which is a big thing about defaults, and it's something that I personally do too much uh, with my current team, because we're at the point, well, we've been at the point, but I'm bad about it, where you don't want to rotate to back post as much. It's still really important to, um, very frequently, but there are a lot of times where you just you just cut through the position. It makes Yeah, because so much... it's just going that fast, that much faster. Yeah, and it's, it's a big... It's a big issue with... I actually don't have Epic Pen installed. I just realized I completely frosted my computer. So, um... Do you want to do it quick? Like, we have time. No. Uh, okay. But you, what will happen is you'll have two people... You have one person who has the option of rotating wide and getting this large boost pad over here, and one person going to back post. And instead of doing that, like, this, this is just... The difference is either the person in front cuts into mid, and the other person goes to back post late, or um, the person in the back cuts through mid, and it kind of ends up where both of you might be around this position near a similar time at some point. But at that point, that's when the person who's mid turns around and like leaves the position. Um, uh, and the person in back post pushes out and stays pushing out. It's I'm going to be honest. I'm going to try. I'm, can I Can I force you to download it? Like, I can't. I'm struggling to visualize i it. can't i can't write on here with you with the way we have it screen shared we can move calls though that would be great uh if you want to set up a dm while i download it yeah that's fine. And then that I'll should just... work i lied to you i have it okay. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good i don't have it pinned and that's my confusion okay tactics and zach because you guys can't wait, see no. these lines i'm drawing right correct all right here we go Okay, do do. This is. Oh. Okay, never mind, there we go. Screen share! Screen share! Uh, oh, 
Oh. 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 oh, there's this now. <laughs> what? Oh, now it's good. We're good. Yeah, now was Echo's gone. Okay. okay. So I'm talking Thank about you is that. you'll have like a it's it's called an in and out. You'll have one person who's inside who looks to rotate back post or cut in, and then you have one person who's outside who looks to rotate wide when this person goes back post, and then cut into back post when this person cuts out. And what happens is as things speed up more and more often, you want this person just cutting out regardless for two big reasons. One, the person who's already challenging the ball needs somebody to support them. And this person needs to be there to support them, or if this person fails, to cut off the pass immediately. Um, the second thing is this person going to back post is usually better timed for goals and saves and whatnot. Or for saves, not goals, but for mm -hmm. being a goalie and saving because they can they can adjust their cut to fit saving the ball a lot better from this slightly wider angle. Um, they won't necessarily be like right here every time. Sometimes you guys will be like up here or whatever. But the same concept ends up applying. The where this kind of falls apart is when you have the outside go in and the inside go to back post. You guys can both end up in this general area as this person moves through net and goes to push out. Um, which mm -hmm. is what I was talking about. And when this happens, it's a matter of this person like turning in and going to back post or um, turning out and kind of leaving, depending on whether you, or not you guys gain possession is kind of how that okay. plays out. Um, and if the ball crosses the field, etc. Because if the ball crosses the field, I'm sure you guys are aware, rotations flip. Um, yep. And in that situation, like... This, this this situation where you have two people here, this person seriously just keeps pushing out, goes to mid, and starts to like move across. This other person just immediately goes for the ball. Um, so the person in net is the one who becomes this midfielder, and the person who was the midfielder just challenges the ball, and your other person will be your back post person at that point. So very... if we want to apply numbers, the person on the right would be one, two would be waiting for a pass, and then third would like fill in the back? Yeah. And this okay. would be the this would be the flip from you guys being uh, what was one on the ball. He turns into three, and then you had mm. your two pushing out of net. He becomes your he's still two actually. He's His position two. doesn't change. And then you had your outfielder who's your third, who's either going like this or going into the back post, whichever. Um, and they become one. Okay. Cool. But that, that last scenario is not 100%. Um, it does cause more breakdowns because of the double position here. It, it's very much about like spacing and reading the play. I don't expect that one to come up as much. But the cutting infield to cut off this area a bit more is something that I think that you guys probably will benefit a lot from on defense. Just because mm -hmm. it it is one of those adjustments away from defaults, which is usually just rotating to back post and causing a train kind of thing to happen. Um that starts to open up a lot of your positioning and spacing in a way that you don't you don't see when you're doing defaults. Um, and for yeah, those... and then and then like that, um, the play you're just talking about, like the alternate rotation, that would be like more of a quick transition to offense sort of thing. Or yeah, be more... it helps. Okay. It helps with that too. Um, and it it just it helps cut off passes and it helps offense offensive transitions. And those are two of the big things that defaults struggle with. Yeah. Um, they do it just fine at lower speed games, but once you start hitting like 1500, 1600, you notice that doesn't happen as much. And if you're playing competitively in Champ 2, Champ 3, uh, it's you'll see similar things because you're playing against teams that are playing faster inherently, whether or not your rank shows it. Um, and that thing with offense is just a matter of like when you have that person rotate through, they're in this passing lane already. Um, if your third man's pushing up, they're in a short passing lane. They're not in a long passing lane. Um, and they're usually a little bit further back than this person. So when you have right. your, your other person who's going to hit the ball, um, for whatever reason... Hold on, let's start out from this point. You have your one man, you have your three man, and you have your two man. Um, this play falls apart. This ball stays on this side of the field. Your one man's moving through the net and transitioning to the other side. Your two man is going to look to leave anyway, just because that play falls apart. If they're cutting in, that's a different issue. You typically don't want to have that happen unless your three man's really, really far away. And that's 
not always the case. A lot of the time, the three man's the one pushing up too much anyway. So we'll digress from that. But as your three man comes in to do this, um, instead of having it like flip where your two man stays kind of a two man or whatever, they end up being your three man. Your three man goes to this one man position, and your one man's now your passing lane. They're facing the wrong way. They're facing this way. And that's what is a little bit more awkward. It's more mechanically intensive, but there's still a viable passing option. And you can put them back in the play by passing to them. And if you have a 50 and you have a 50 option of letting it go behind you or crossing all the way across the field because you know that you'll pinch it hard enough and the space is semi-open, um, it's good to have it pinch across instead because you have someone over there. You have them, they can cut rotation. Um, you don't need to worry about the three-man challenging at that point. They just kind of float back across kind of thing. And then you become the two man. And it's like this weird dynamic where you're not really doing default rotations. You're just holding several spaces on the field that are advantageous to you. And it holds down midfield a lot better because you stop the ball from coming to midfield, which means when they do get touches and when you starve them out, the ball's less likely to just boom over your head. And when that happens, your three man, instead of being like a reactive player, they're proactively just keeping the ball either in midfield or pushing it back up into a corner to one of the people who are stuck up on offense. And the last thing that they could be doing is a solo play. Um, and then your third man kind of becomes your solo player where they pull the ball up and they're either slowing down the play to make it to where you guys can get back into positions that are viable, or they're just doing a solo play while both of you rotate out. And then you regain possession and pressure from midfield again. Hmm. Um, and you don't worry about keeping complete control of the ball in this general area you let the enemy team give you the ball back um, by putting them in awkward positions and capitalizing on weak clears the interesting it's it's a lot of forcing errors as opposed to letting you letting them make errors and then you scrambling to capitalize on them but with that all said do you guys have any questions um there will be a video of this, yeah? Yeah, I'm, I'm recording. Awesome. You can ask questions in the comments or whatever later also. Okay, cool. Or DM me or whatever, however you want to go through the communication. So, like, here, here's an example of where your defaults are kind of taking precedence and they don't need to. So, zero flipping here is completely unnecessary. He could just drive out and turn up. And instead of rotating by default back to the third man position and letting tactics come up he just takes that two man position because he's already there and tactics just worries about playing third man and not letting the ball get cleared over his head but when you have uh, zero go back to third man and tactics kind of push up the way he is um, well he's getting the ball now because of the way that played out but it's much slower like, Steam never at any point has a passing option. He has to take a 50 or do a solo play, and that's it. And that is a horrible thing to do, always. Right here, just keep driving. This is... You, you always just keep driving from this position. If that ball is at any point behind you on offense, leave. Yeah. Yeah. Um, holy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was so no like, part of the scramble is you not leaving and zero not cutting into that ball. So right here, you should just be cutting into this ball and trying to push it off this wall and up or cutting all the way into the side and pushing it that way. Um, yep. Wonderful echo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have myself muted because of the echo. That's fine. Uh, cool. But like this is this is another thing where it's like this is not necessarily midfield pressure or possession, but it's a stall move to stop it, stop the play from progressing on your guys' side of the field before your teammates are back. Um, I forget what I was gonna say a second ago about the ball being behind you thing. Oh, there are situations where it makes sense to turn around and go for a ball behind you, but because you're just moving from defaults to looking at how to adjust rotations, you don't want to worry about that because you still want some like rules of thumb to just yeah. work off of. And one of the best ones is if the ball's behind you and you have a teammate who could be there, there's absolutely no reason for you to ball chase. 
For sure. And that's the case like 99% of the time. Um, you got bumped, so that's irreparable. This is kind of a scramble. So it's almost better if Zero hits this. You may not realize it, but because you're either hitting it to Chuck or this guy in the back, they kind of have this whole territory covered. Um, and so when he puts it over here, he's just keeping it away from them, which is funny. But whenever you're bumped, like as you're moving through the air, look at where the enemies are. Don't worry about the play as much. Just try and recover and look at where your enemies are, because if you have to follow up for whatever reason, you don't want to be following up by hitting it into your opponents. Because then they they get everything they want out of you from bumping you. They force an error from your panic. It's another kind of situation where you're you're going behind yourself to hit the ball. It's possible that Zero gets beat here, but looks like he has enough boost to actually get a 50, or at least dunk. Or like hit the ball after he hits it kind of thing. But what happened here? This is a situation where you don't want to be just like moving too quickly. I can't tell entirely if you're boosting zero, but you're you're in position to be the two man. So you just kinda like want to slow down and grab like this boost pad and cut up or like move over here and cut in kind of thing. However you end up slicing the cake, you really want to pay attention to like this part of the field for at least a second and be here. Okay. When you leave just because you were kind of over here and like scrambling around, you're just taking away this as an option from tactics. Steam literally can never receive a pass from Tactics unless it's the hardest bang off backboard ever and everyone else is really slow to react to it. This is this is over wide. As soon as you don't get this boost pad, or if you are gonna get this boost pad, you just come back to this boost lane. Okay. Um even if you get the boost pad, don't grab these twelves. Like avoid them. You want your teammates yeah. to be able to come through and get them unless you're like hard starving the opponent. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but in this case, you wouldn't be. And so you just want to cut into midfield. The it, Even if he's not going to pass to you, because this is, this is back on like transitioning towards like tightening rotations and being able to adjust them. Even if he doesn't pass to you and you're not looking for a pass for whatever reason, this is still a much better transition for any kind of boomer clears. Because if this gets over zero, if you're over here on this wall, moving back and close to this boost pad as they're clearing it, you're going to have hell getting back onto defense. But if you're yeah. close to this boost pad, you can intercept things, you can cut off shots to the goal, you can adjust however you need to to catch the ball or stall. Um, you can apply pressure if they start gaining possession in midfield and s slow them down either by forcing them to dribble and flick over you or by just challenging it and 50 -ing. Okay, yeah. So this is good. Um, a second ago, you guys had the in and out. Well, actually, yeah, this is in. Sorry, in and out. Um, and Zero just bolted to the three-man position. And Steam, you're staying up here as the two-man. And this is really good awareness on your guys' part. And this is the kind of thing that you want to be doing more often. Is whenever you have this situation where anyone's close together, you have an automatic determination of who's going where. Steam's not going to cross. He'd just be banging zero or getting bumped by someone else. Um, but zero going out and over here is really good because it's fast to the third man position. He can collect a couple of boost pads if he's smart about it um, and slow down. He can. He doesn't need to like be boosting or doing anything other than driving and flipping a couple times. Maybe not even a couple times. Flipping once um, and then turning around like around the halfway mark or a little bit behind it. And then you get to just look for a pass. If that as soon as that pass doesn't come, you leave or whatever. But this is good spacing. This is good awareness that your tactics basically has a free touch here. Um, and it looks like you guys almost scored off it too. So here we go again. Seems still looking for a pass. It doesn't come. Uh, he cuts in. This is this is bittersweet. So tactics is zipping. 
Um, I don't think he would have beat Hall Dog. And this is one of the situations where, like, again, you're kind of adjusting your rotations. What Tactics wants to do, as soon as he sees you cutting across for whatever reason, is look to follow up your touch instead of following up whatever whatever else he was going to do initially. And it it requires, like, being able to make those decisions really quickly, which is kind of difficult. So you see how he, he uh, maneuvers kind of swerving by slowing down? If instead he just looks at, like, where you're hitting this ball and just keeps driving up, he can catch it off the bounce faster than other people. Um, because he doesn't have to worry about you following it up or whatever. He just knows that he's going to be following it up because you're not like banging it into this part of the wall or trying to get it to roll up or controlling it because you're you're just going hard for it. Um, and you guys can use comms to clarify on those kinds of things. I don't think any of you are really like heavy wall solo players <laughs> from what I've seen previously and just like the way you guys talk about yourselves. Um, so it makes a lot of sense for you guys to just instinctively look for touch and go kind of situations like this. Whereas like he's yeah. getting beat to this now because he didn't just follow where your touch was going regardless. <laughs> Everyone rotates the back post. <laughs> yeah. So you can see this is exactly what I was talking about earlier when I was saying like there's a lot of points to adjust and you want to think a lot about midfield and how to stop stuff in midfield. As soon as you're on defense, defense doesn't ever really start on your side of the field. It always starts on the opposing side of the field as soon as you lose possession um, and can't immediately regain it. And what you want to do is try and stop them from getting past here on offense. Um, and your best candidate for this might actually be zero and possibly tactics, depending on like what the situation is with you guys and who realizes what they can do faster. Um, like at this point, it makes a lot of sense in my mind if zero has decent boost to just turn in an aerial for this, um, just to stop them from moving past midfield. That's mm -hmm. it. You guys don't have to regain possession off of that or anything. You can continue to scramble, but it gives you a lot of space and it gives you more time to make decisions. And then um, if one of you are aware enough or like able to read the touch well enough, you can look to follow up his touch again. And it stops you guys from going back on defense and it re-gives you guys either possession or alleviates pressure from this side of the field. And it keeps you guys in this general area for a decent amount of time. Um, the other thing is, is as soon as uh, Steam sees zero in front of him, he should be looking to just cut in on this. At this at this point, as soon as you guys get past midfield line, if you're still all watching the ball, something is wrong. <laughs> you guys need to be flipping in and out of ball cam whenever you're leaving the play. Um, and in this particular scenario, the person who has the most vision, which would be Steam, um, Tactics could reasonably do it, but he's so much further away from the ball that there's not a whole lot he can do. Um, he's, he's basically like, you have your inside, your outside, and then steam and steam's kind of the odd man out, which is why he would want to leave your guys space and go do something else. Mm -hmm. So, okay. In, in that scenario where we're all, uh, scrambling back, zero is going to go back post. Nathan will either grab boost and go back post or back wall or something. And then I should be giving them space and just trying to like throw myself at it to make the enemy team do something. Yeah. There's a lot of different ways this can play out. Um, so from, from this point, we're going to just assume that none of you are cutting in at midfield because you, none of you have realized that you need to keep possession on midfield and this is already a mistake. And we're just going to accept that the mm -hmm. adjustment from there um, is at this point or like right around this point, um, you'd want to pressure the ball Zero would want to go close to front post or like get in this area and kind of cut through the back post position, um, depending on how this looks like it's going to play out. If it looks like they're just going to directly take a shot on the net, obviously just go cover the net. Um, give yourself like a little bit of space, Zero, and then cut in. Because a lot of the time, what's going to happen is you're going to have them pushing the ball forward into the corner or just shooting. If they're pushing the ball forward, it's going over steam and Zero's going to follow it up. If they're pushing it into the corner, it's possible that Steam can cut that off. If he doesn't, again, Zero just adjusts and goes for it. Um, and then if they shoot, that's when 
one of two things happens is either zero doesn't actually end up cutting through and he just saves it or he lets tactics do it and he looks to be the next person to receive the ball from tactics because if he's cutting through and they just immediately take a shot tactics goes to cut it off he looks to push it towards zero zero looks to follow up tactics touch steam at that point you're hopefully you haven't fully committed to the ball and just flung yourself up into this corner um mm-hmm. And assuming that you don't do that, like you just fake challenge or you soft challenge or something along those yeah, lines, yeah. Um, you're looking to just rotate back at that point. And then you guys have decent spacing. You have someone who can follow up touches and you have an, the ability to transition and regain possession. And as things continue, you can the rotations can change from there. Like if you guys don't gain possession, you have someone move up a little bit. You have someone cut off, off wide. They start to come back. Steam's going through net. Um, you have your one person who's late covering the passing lane the other person's at back post steam's challenging the ball and rotations kind of fix themselves there the thing with that is making sure that you guys don't speed through positions too much so like zero has been supersonic almost this entire game and that's really bad even if you're playing really fast and you're playing in a really fast paced game if you're supersonic the entire time something's wrong because you're either using too much boost or you're blowing through positions and losing a lot of opportunities Either that or you're rotating really wide and you're just zooming everywhere. And that's that's a whole other story, but we haven't really seen too much of that. Okay. Um, and that the whole idea between like cutting around like that is just spacing. Because right now, they have the entire field to work with. You guys have right. less than a quarter of the field to work with. <laughs> yeah. And auto double commit. Yep. Because there's no... There's no concept of who's supposed to be doing what when you guys group up this far back and get this close that needs to be decided before you guys get to a position where you're making a decision about whether or not you're challenging the ball um you need to just act and even if you're just driving toward the ball and have absolutely no intention of jumping for it that's fine because you're making space you don't need three people in the same position kind of thing Mm mm-hmm These guys really did not capitalize on that, though. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. We, we, we played really scuffed, but so here's, just kind of pulled through. Here's an example of like where it's kind of good. I don't know if Zero necessarily knows that you're behind him. I'm going to pretend like he does, because ideally he either should through comms or just awareness from the way he was cutting in from here. Because like if you look, he's like wide, getting boost. He cuts in. If he turns off ball cam or flicks his stick, he should be able to see you or hear you flipping. Um, And then he knows he doesn't need to go back post. So he immediately just cuts in. And this is exactly what I was talking about with um, letting you go back post instead of going wide. You're going directly into back post, and he's immediately just cutting out. Tactics is already out of the play, and that's fine. And he's beating this guy to the ball strictly because of that. I mean, he's also going supersonic the entire time, and he probably could have had a better approach if he didn't grab this boost and instead just picked up pads or whatever, but I'll digress from that part of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it after this. How did this turn into a goal? Oh, he just is bad. Okay. He yeah. always hits the mark. <laughs> I mean, that defender just did not touch the ball. True. You didn't even shoot it behind him. He just literally <laughs> whiffed. Good times. So, like, spacing here is decent, except Steam is slowing down too much without, like... Well, maybe not too terribly too much, but he's not looking for the pass quickly enough. So, at about this point... Right here, you should be seeing your teammate approaching um, or about to approach it. And that's when you start to look to get passed to. And you make it clear that you're the one who's going to receive a pass if that pass comes along at all. Obviously, if Tactics just bangs this off backboard, Zero's the one following it up. But you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, defaults breaking down. Um, You guys are scrambling. What do you do next? And it's just, where are you on the field? Where are your teammates on the field? And finding out what you should be doing based on that. Because there's going to be like a second transition. 
a second long transition. I was talking about time, just to be clear. I don't know if that made sense to anyone else. You know, that'll... I don't know. Um, right here, don't slow down too much. Um, it makes sense to slow down when you're coming into this position and you're uncertain about what's going to happen. But if you slow down too much, like... First of all, let's look at your boost. Your boost is okay. So, like, it's okay to come... Like, to where you're taking your foot off the gas, but not full stop. When you okay. full stop, you can't really cover the momentum. side of the net. Yeah. yeah. Um, you There's the possibility of it, but if they shoot anywhere inside the box into that part of the net, you're going to have hell getting to it. And if they decide to look like they're going to shoot here, and they decide to shoot over here, you can't you can't do anything about it. Because you can't cut off their shot as they're taking it. Instead, you have to actually just play to the net, and that's really scary. Yeah. So, you guys kind of spaced out, oddly enough, decently, except Zero's not going closer to back post. He's kind of cutting through, um, which is bad. He needs to just slow down and not be boosting here. There's literally no reason for him to boost. But other than that, you guys end up spacing out well. Um, this is, again, another situation where defaults kind of break down. Tactics should be rotating up with Steam or looking to follow up his touch because he can do it faster than Zero. Um, and then Zero should just be slowing down and playing goalie for a second. If Steam gets dispossessed, Tactics starts rotating back, Zero just comes out. For sure. That's not what I wanted to do. Which one is it? Okay, there we go. Funny enough, here's a situation where you don't want to cut in too fast. Um, zero can cut this off if it bounces out. You're just looking to follow it up if it stays in the corner. And to do that, you want to give yourself this wide berth so that you have the best approach angle. Oh, yeah. And Zero just wants to play in that, that midfield area. Because you can see it bounces out. If you go to back post and he plays that midfield area, he just follows it through. We can watch it again real quick. You can see that he he would have beat Dex by a mile if he had like 12 or 24 boost. And then you wouldn't be sitting here floating in the air um, from trying to challenge that from an awkward angle. And then uh, you guys would have some kind of transition available. Or just continue to 50 and stay on defense or whatever you need to do. And that's a situation where it's better to go like full wide. Yeah. This okay. one? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 I'm just, yeah, I'm just trying to see what the yeah you how go it works full out. wide because you have someone behind you. Um, you don't need to worry about covering short because he's either going to cut into midfield to stop any kind of passing play, um, and by cut into midfield that also includes just hitting the ball off of the backboard if it stays close to backboard because you right. specifically are looking at handling two things, um, them keeping the ball near front post and just challenging it forward so you can push it out. And if the ball stays in the corner or is controlled by tactics, you're looking to follow him up. And then Zero okay. is looking to cover backboard as he transitions in. And if it comes into an infield pass or whatever, he's looking to cut that off as quickly as possible. So you don't have to really worry about this part of the net or this side of the field. And that's what's nice. Right. And then contrast that real quick just to refresh of when it's better to cut tight and let someone else handle the back post. Zero is on the opposite side of the field. Okay. So, I see. Yeah, 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 because he'll just fill in more easily. Yeah, he fills in over here. You look to cut off the passing option and the backboard. Um, Perfect. And in the case that this goes behind you, he's already wide anyway, so he's going to be able to uh, essentially do the same thing. If this hits backboard, he can just jump up and get it um, because it's behind you. It's it, it hits like this part of backboard and bounces out. Um, if they go to cross it in field, you're hopefully cutting that off, but if you don't, then he's able to still either goaltend, or if it's a long pass, he's able to cut that off. Sure. Thank you. 
for the clarification. And that's just, um, that's that whole like rotations flipping thing. Like you guys are both coming from essentially behind the ball. And this will happen a lot, either from the ball crossing the field as it gets down the field, or just you guys coming out of net this way for whatever reason. Um, both of you end up doing that. And that, that happens. It's fine. Um, but just be aware of like where your teammate would be coming from. And you you would know this as you're transitioning through here that zero is not in your in your vision. If you like turn off ball cam um, for a second while flipping or like while you're turning into the field, you turn off ball cam and then you turn it back on as you look to go to your next position. Um, and if you guys can get better about flicking your stick, that's always a thing. I'm still working on that. So I can't really like harsh anyone too on it. I can't harp on anyone too bad for it. I think we're I think we're doing it. We're just not processing it in our brains yet, but we're we're working on it. You're gathering the information. It's just not actually being like processed. Yeah, like in one ear out the other. Yeah. But it, 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 we're working on it. This is a funny thing. Seam, see how you boost here, <laughs> and then immediately slow down. <laughs> this is something to have, like once you get to this point, you just turn around and drive up. Like, you have a team right there. <laughs> There's no way okay. you're not seeing me. him in ball cam. It wasn't me. Like, you know he's there. And it makes sense for him to cut on this. But you don't need to you don't need to hit your brakes or anything. You just need to just drive normally. And then as soon as that fifty happens, you know exactly what to do. You're doing it right now. Mm-hmm. Um, Zero's still rotating wide. I think Zero's biggest issue, honestly, isn't so much that he's just like a boost-hungry goblin. It's that um, he actually just rotates wide all of the time. And because he's rotating wide constantly, he never gives himself the opportunity to slow down because he's always rushing to positions wherever the heck they are. And when you do that, that okay. when you do that, you're always going to be supersonic or close to supersonic in a way that's detrimental because you're not doing it with purpose. You're doing it because you're panicking or because you've intentionally put yourself out of position for an objective that doesn't exist. Um, instead of like how he was just over here and he's done this like a million times already. He could just be going down this boost lane and he could either flip once or just drive down it casually with the way you guys are positioned. And either case is fine. If he flips through it, he's not really a passing option. And that's something that needs to be like very abundantly clear is anytime you're flipping out of an area you're alleviating that position effectively it is very hard to flip and then turn around and immediately do something especially if you're low boost um but it, it seems a lot like he just he plays to the wide part of the field and that's what's causing him to boost everywhere mm -hmm. and that makes sense because sometimes when like we end up in a position sometimes it gets weird with cutting due to him arriving fast or late if it's too wide or sometimes We'll see. Yeah. I think that was happening before when we didn't have the um, rotation switched. So at this point, he's supersonic. And you see, he slows down here, but then he just like immediately gets to supersonic again. Um, but backs off. So like right here, what you're doing initially, zero, makes sense. You don't need to like hard challenge and jump for this ball or anything, but you want to keep close to it. Because if they slow down for any reason, you get a free 50. And that's very bad for them because it flips their position. But when you back off here, they're no longer like afraid. Like If this guy doesn't flip into it or if he stops himself from flipping into it, he's no longer afraid to just carry this ball down. You're going to have a hard time turning around and challenging him. Um, you want to keep pushing this to get him to boom it over you this way. You don't want to give him the opportunity to push it down the field behind you which if he hits it this way, it would happen. Um, Steam's there, but it's still not good. Um, you, you just want to keep more pressure on the ball. And you can see you turn around because you kind of... Wait, did you get hit? Or did you turn around? Because you might have just got hit by tactic. No, you turn around. So yeah, you see him hit it and you just immediately turn around. And that's not good. So if you just pressure this ball the way you had initially intended it, instead of doing that fake challenge so far away from the ball... Um, you don't have to worry about turning around because if he hits it behind you, it's very clearly behind you. You're you're gonna just keep moving this way and then cut out this way. Tactics is gonna look to cut infield. Steam is gonna figure out what he's doing next, <laughs> based on based on where you guys yeah. go. Um, 
because like Steam could just continue rotating out this way, or he could look to cut back, and then you have um, a ball side rotation that's intentional, which is another yeah, thing. Like... Yeah, there's a, that's another thing that like you, when you start to get away from defaults, you see situations where you should be rotating ball side, but it's uh-huh. it's uh, what is it? Bittersweet. It's like a double edged sword because if you do it at the wrong time, you're just fucking your teammate. Um, yeah. But if, if like, in this situation, tactics comes up this way, and then you rotate ball side, but, like, close to the middle of the field, and zero just is going over here, you guys are spaced really well. You have the opportunity to stop stuff from going over tactics head. Zero's on the opposite side of the field as a passing option, and so on. Cool. Um, and then the other thing is, if you guys ever do fake challenge and start to, sh- to like, go into a shadow position, never ever turn the opposite way of where the ball is going ever you go wide and cut in or you turn around and get on the other side of it and hit it like depending on which side of the field you want to go on you either like go wide and get in or you you cut uh short and try and push it in the opposite direction whenever you just turn out the way away from the ball you're you're not doing anything ever you're just taking yourself out of the play and you can see he did that does this result in a goal it does rip this is actually like a very good point so this all like this really just fell apart right here where zero doesn't pressure this because it literally if he just drives in this line he can't hit that into the net without hitting it high and that's really important um are you able to adjust the quality of tick at all no. Or is it on my end or is it okay? No it's, problem. It's it's one or both. Yeah. Probably. Oh, I only had until nine thirty ish. I'll watch the. Oh, okay. I'll just keep uh reaming your ass then while you're yeah, not yeah, here. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this results in a goal for two reasons. Oh, so wait. the other the other thing is is if zero did just keep driving this way, um, he could have just easily cut this off. Like I was saying, you you go a little bit wider, you cut in, you're fine. Um. But because he just turned it, it breaks all the way apart. Yeah. I'm going to try not to harp on too many things here. Um, just wide rotations there by two people at once is bad. Ends up being okay. There's a slowdown right here by tactics. Mm. <laughs> so you can see this is... So here's here's another situation where it's like, you're fine if you just keep going wide. You have a lot of space and the ball's coming to you. You don't need to get to this ball early. Um, if you do, all you're doing is like pushing it out this way unless you control it up the wall, which the way you're going at it, you're probably not going to do. Um, and it's just something to be aware of that you don't need to rush this touch <laughs> uh, unless there's someone back here. And right. If there is... The way you change what you're doing is by following so that you, if you look and see that there's someone back there, or you're just aware because there's two people up here instead of three, um, you look to cut through the net and reach the ball that way and ch- try and find a point in, in your movement down the field to challenge the ball, either before that person or at least 50 them. Um, but in the case okay. where there's not anyone there, you literally just go wide and take control. Um one of your teammates can stay upfield. Like, Tactics is taking forever to get out, so you can look to push it near him or into open space. You can look to control it in solo play because you're effectively the third man, like I said before. And this is all back on, like, midfield possession. You don't need to, to do anything proactive with this ball immediately. You just need to do something that gives you guys possession. Mm-hmm. And it, it, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, the last the last thing you could do, honestly, is kind of what uh, Zero is doing terribly here, is let that ball roll up and look to bang it across. Right. Um, and then follow it. 
and I think we get fucked on this one. Yeah, um, we do. Yeah, you guys get scored on. <laughs> so if you if you had done that, you probably wouldn't have gotten scored on. But yeah, because there's no one there, so it's like it's really safe to take it across the net as long as you stay close to the ball. Um, yeah. If even if you just dribble it across at that point, because they're so so much slower to get to this place than you are. Like you had time to hit this wall and come off of it before zero touched the ball. Okay. Yeah. So when Tactic goes up on this wall, Zero should well Zero should just be driving straight before anything to see what Tactics is doing. And when he goes up on the wall, that's when Zero turns infield. Um, again, it's like a space coverage thing. Like you're you're cutting out options. Okay. Um, again, that's something that like I also do by accident, and I find myself doing, and it's a really horrible feeling. <laughs> <laughs> So here, it makes sense for you to like get closer to the ball and shadow defend, um, mostly because he can't really hit that super hard from the position he's in, and you want to get close in case you have this like this opportunity opens up. It's an unforced error; you get to capitalize on it. Um, but if you get close and don't see that, you can just shadow and look to defend by either kicking the ball to a corner when he flicks it or pushes it over your head, or if he tries to pass it, you can try and cut that off. Um, the pass is probably the thing that would stop you from being able to save it. But you guys are kind of sieged because you didn't pressure the ball in midfield and gave them that space. Mm. You can see you guys are staying stuck on defense. Zeros has it. This is horrible. I know I've talked to him about this in the past, like the one time I've ever coached him in the world. You never do this in net. Ever. Mm-hmm. If you back up, you back up once, with purpose, knowing no one's behind you. If you ever feel like you're backing up again, you've been there too long, just leave. It is literally as simple as that. You just drive straight out of the net. Um, you don't worry about doing anything with the play. You look about figuring out whether you need to go back post after, or if you need to be there to receive a pass from your teammate. But like almost always you're going to have a teammate there. If you're backing up at all and you're not immediately doing anything, you look to see if a teammate's coming in or you ask if someone is back and you give them the opportunity to cut you um, because at that point you're literally goaltending. Um, and there's a very few circumstances in which you ever want to do that. Like if Zach just left this a second ago and looked to pressure this and force this guy to hit it hard, tactics would have been fine. Um like at this point, if he just came out of the net, even though you're there, you're just going to leave anyway. He just lets that guy hit him over, hit it over his head, and then he looks to come around. And then Tactics doesn't have to worry about taking a kind of unsafe challenge. He can get balled and Zero can cut in on this or go to back post and challenge it that way, however, this, mm -hmm. however quickly this plays out. When he does this, you see how Tactics slows down too now? You guys are going to stay under siege because of this. See, they still have possession. And there's also there's also an increased state of panic when you mm -hmm. guys do that because all of your defensive rotations slow down and everybody's like trying to move fast and slow at the same time and it's really uncomfortable for literally everybody. Last thing is uh, right here. That ball is away from you. You're either challenging this or you're leaving. You can't do both. So like right here, you go to challenge it. It doesn't work. You bolt out. You don't want to stay anywhere near this part of the field. Okay. You just, you'll get in your teammates' way as they're coming in. Right. And because you cut too short and stayed close to this part of the field and then immediately went to back post, you can see you're double committing. And that's like a spacing and timing thing. Um, there's there's definitely a time to be faster and do that faster and cut in and get to back post quickly. This is not one of those times. Okay. So 
So this is funny. This is like defaults happening with one person and no one else on the team. Or Zero just wants boost. I can't tell which it is. All of the above. <laughs> so there's a good like kind of back pass and cut in. This is this is like a this is a really smart touch because you're you're pushing the ball away from them so they can't shoot even though it's kind of on net. Um, but your teammate's back so he can easily get to it. And if you have boost tactics, you could probably cut that off before it gets all the way to net by just boosting and cutting it in yep. closer to net. And like it's super super safe to do. It doesn't seem like it at first, but like it's it's extremely safe in threes a lot of the time, as long as your opponents are behind you. If any of them are in front of you, that's scary as shit to do. But in yeah. that particular situation, that was really smart. Definitely calculated. You can see that you guys didn't stay on defense for very long, and it's one hundred percent because mm -hmm. of tactics touch. Yeah. Apparently you guys scored off it too. <laughs> hey, Lama. Why were they all over there? Did you see this? This is yeah, this is a little questionable. Like three ball side <laughs> rotations, it's fine. <laughs> I'd be scared if we were on their end of the analysis. No, those are good learning moments. It's just definitely. Oh my. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of good learning moments. <laughs> so Shit. again, Zero's boosting here, and he doesn't need to be because he's like getting supersonic super quickly. He rotates wide. That's fine. Or not <coughs> rotates wide. Mm -hmm. You guys are doing kickoff. He just got boost. That's fine. He's not a proactive player right now. If this ball was at this angle, or this angle, he's fine. This ball is moving forward. <laughs> Uh, he's looking to get that cleared to him, or he should be. That person, their back person is going to control it, in which case Tactics challenges it, um, or they're going to boom it, in which case Zero needs to be back far enough to catch that and be spaced really well. The second he boosts on, on his back post position, which we'll look at again, he's just completely stopped you guys from being able to handle a, a boomer. Because he's going to be panicking and scrambling. And you can see he just kind of double commits here. Whereas uh, if he just approached slower, moved through the net slower, he'd see Tactics get that 50 and he could look to cut across or um, support Steam at that point. And if Tactics 50 takes him all the way across, he can look to be the two-man and receive a pass or whatever. Um, he could have just done so much more with his space and done a lot to be like off the play and create a lot of space a lot of uh, options for you guys. I was going to say opportunities, but that's not the right word. No, yeah, that makes sense. Bumps. Hazard is bumps. So when that ball cuts across the field like this, you should be turning at it. Um, going into net doesn't do you anything, because a lot of the time they're just going to shoot this way anyway and you're going to be moving through that spot very quickly. Mm -hmm. You're not mm -hmm. even, like, touching it. Yeah. I think there was a lot of full panic. Oh, definitely. For 90% of this match. You guys have defensive panic in spades. Yeah. To be fair, definitely. we just scrim varsity before. And that was a bad. That was bad. We need we need to work on that too, like being yeah. more confident in just like matches that quote unquote mean something. But because we're really prone to just cracking. So if Steam doesn't boost here, this is fine. See how he's like supersonic. <laughs> hey. It's it's very weird, like how much playing slower is relevant to keeping positioning and actually playing how much being slower is relevant to positioning and playing faster yeah funny how that works it's also boost conservative in this case because yeah. like right here um you slow down you don't let them have this midfield area if they bang it off the wall you're able to turn on it easily if they push it this way for whatever reason because they think the space is open you boost you're supersonic you're good um, if mm -hmm. for whatever reason one of these guys wasn't retarded and was over here, um, and that option sort of covered. 
that option's completely covered by you because you'll be able to get okay. to that ball before he will, 100% okay, yeah. of the time. Or if he's beating you, he's pushing it into this corner. And then it's scary right. because he could be doing a pass, a pass back play, but I have some doubts about these guys doing that. Um, you might find some other opponents doing that. Definitely. Again, tactics is slowed down because of that cut from Steam. You can see how that like kind of makes defensive things shaky. Zero just turned out, which is weird. But I'm not going to harp on that too much. I think it's pretty obvious why that's bad. That was a really, really good pass. Nathan's a god. <laughs> okay, now to look at this loss. We're mostly going to cover like the breakdowns that lead up into these goals because we covered a lot of the rotational things in the other video, along with like some of the times it was good. Um, I think you guys are definitely playing much faster than defaults allow you to, and it's kind of horrifying, because okay. your spacing is like okay most of the time, but because you guys are playing too much to defaults, you guys are cramping up in areas like right here, um, you're cramping up in midfield, and sometimes you'll have two of you really close to the net. And these are kind of like your three hot areas. Um, you can flip this for the other side also. Of course. Um, but these are your guys' hot areas, basically, where you'll have two people in one of these areas far too often without one of you doing something to change that. Um, and that's that's kind of your biggest issue right now with spacing and why rotations probably feel really shaky. The other thing is you guys just don't pressure the wall enough in midfield, ever. Um, there's very, very, mm. very few times you do that. You do that when you guys think you are still on offense, and that's fine. But you still need to do it when you're on defense, because it's the place that people will just pull the ball up. You'll be in net, and they'll be out here. How do you challenge that? It it just sends zero full speed, <laughs> and they'll just move the ball around you. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's so easy to deal with that. And if they do that, you you probably have some teammates who are either slowed down or moving through a position and it's very uncomfortable. That makes sense cuz in 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 some of our scrims against people who are meant to clap us, uh they just like sit one person back there and are like bringing it up the wall and then bringing it out of our reach and then bringing it back in again and we just get Yeah, they just keep the ball away from you very yeah. very easily. And yep. you you have to either overextend or just monkey challenge them. And it's very easy for them to deal with it at that point. Yeah. Not these guys, but... No, not these guys. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but... So here's here's a situation where, like, backing up is remotely reasonable. But you either want to be half flipping or power slide turning and boosting. Um, or even aerialing for this, if you're comfortable and have enough boost to burn. Rough but, um, so I don't know, but yeah, I don't know either. We can back up a little bit. You, oh, never mind. You probably have boost. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> also, I'm bad, so there's that too. I mean, like that happened, but like right here, yeah. as soon as you're backing up, you want to be power sliding because the reason you're backing up is because you want to face this way, and right. so you just want to make that happen as quickly as possible so that you can challenge that ball as it's coming down or chase it in some sense. Again, like, just pressuring the ball kind of thing. Okay. Because if that guy was any better, he probably could have just shot that. Gotcha. Bad read. Good idea from zero there. Um... I don't... Hold on. I actually need to know, because it's so... Okay. Yeah. Right here, he should be looking to cut this off after the bounce, before it gets out to midfield. Uh, that's, like, the only thing. And this is this is a read and experience thing, because this isn't, like... You see this happening, and it's not 100% clear what you should be doing. Just aerialing up for that is really hard. Um... But you don't want to you don't want to wait too terribly long because like right here you get beat to it or he gets beat to it he's not here anymore because he waits. He'll too be long. watching the video though. So. Yeah. Um. 
Whereas if he just looked to cut that off on the apex of its bounce with like a fast aerial or just like being aware that it's going to bounce and adjusting himself, he he would have been much better off. Again, wide rotation. And again, because he's just boosting everywhere. This is interesting. Tactics turned away from this. This is like the perfect moment to be a monkey. <laughs> you literally just full send on this. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Like, your entire team is backfield. See how much space they got from that? Mm -hmm. Zero's not rotating back post, and that's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. What should be happening is like a little... Swoop. Yeah, yeah, a little swoop. And then as Steam comes in, he'll he'll cover midfield. Uh, midfield and cut across like the tight one, or the just fill in back post behind zero. Um, so right here, in an ideal, what you're doing is probably correct. <laughs> just to give you okay. an example of like what you should be doing, um, you just kind of come down this way because your teammates are both like moving through net and one of them's pushing the ball up this way. So you want to stay close enough that if things go bad and come out, you're able to follow it up. Um, and mm -hmm. then if things go good and the ball pushes up field, you want to be ready for that. And if things okay. go horrible and the ball goes past both of them or toward the net, you want to be able to boost and at least have some chance of dealing with that. Okay. Um, but if the ball stays in the corner, Zero should be the, be able to challenge it because he'd be like coming through back post and coming up. But basically, what what you're covering is from this part of the field, well, not that far, from this part of the field, over, um, and kind of this part of the field up, but not a hundred percent. In this case, it makes sense because Dex would have just beat Zero to that ball, and that would have been horrible. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But and Zero. In the case that Zero does go back post, he's spaced better. You cut in on this, he just adjusts, turns up, picks this ball up, and you guys start moving on to offense. And again, okay. spacing thing, it like becomes much more obvious what you should be doing when you have that little bit of extra space. God, he is zippy boy 9000. Yeah. Holy, what just happened? Did he flip into net? He did. Don't do that. <laughs> At least he's flipping. No. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. No. Right here at this point, like, hold on. Let's 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 get real close so you can see. No, no, <laughs> I understand. I understand this is bad, but before there just weren't flips, period, anywhere. Oh, ever? <laughs> I mean, I mean, there were, but like it was. Oh, it was OK. Yeah, no, there's a happy medium. This is probably that <laughs> learning curve. Like uh, you go from here's here's your axis. There's no flips and then all the flips. And then you kind of want to be somewhere along here, and he's doing this. There we go. Um, but he really wants to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's yeah. good. We'll get it. Yeah, for sure. He's doing. He's, doing, he's putting in the work. Hopefully, it's all it's all learning curve. There's always overcorrection before there's doing it properly, or undercorrection, one or one or the other. See, like this cut makes a lot of sense because if that guy just gets to hit that ball and you're moving back, he'll hit it to you, but you're still in a one v two, one v three kind of situation where you either have to control the ball or get it past one of them. And if you control the ball, you're probably getting challenged. If you get it past one of them, that's the ideal scenario. You're most likely just losing possession and your teammates are in midfield. So like that that cut is 100% necessary. Just mm -hmm. to, if, Even if you get a 50 and that ball stays midfield, that's so much more time for tactics and zero to get into better positions. And then the better case scenario is that you guys stay on offense. That's midfield pressure, like at its finest. So right here, you flip there, 
that's fine, but you're like zippy. Um, you want to look at like what? Oh yeah. What could be happening? So right here, tactics doesn't hundred percent have the shot cut off, so it makes sense for you to turn in here. But you want to be able to like recognize that you need to immediately turn out and just be boosting again. Um, don't slow down. If you if you just keep your momentum and do that, you're fine. Um, you're gonna fifty anyone who's in the corner essentially. The only okay. thing they can do is slip the ball past you here, and they'd have to approach from a good angle to do that, almost always. But the other thing <laughs> that cues you into why that's totally fine is you just rotated through here. You should be taking off ball cam and seeing that no one's over here before cutting into back post, because if you had a teammate in the corner, you want to look to just cut them anyway, um, because that's what this position is. So... Mm -hmm. Get that information. Don't slow down a net. <laughs> yeah. Big brain pass. This is funny. Somebody <sighs> flips like so far away from this. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is another scenario where like that flipping is either bad or he's just doing it wrong. Um, you either want to flip over to this wall and turn into it, or you just want to drive. If you have boost, boost a bit. If you don't have boost, just drive. Um, the flipping is something you want to do in that situation if you're confident in what your car is going to do and your car control. You can see he kind of like skirts there. That's that's not being confident in what your car is going to do, and also not flipping the way you intend to. Diagonal flipping helps with that. You guys just left him for dead. <laughs> this is 120% panic. Yeah, I think yeah, I got demoed at mid, and then I was panicking before the demo. Look at, <laughs> I'm, I literally didn't see anything. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> um, hold up, hold up. Why are you even panicking? Oh no, boost. That's why. You touch that ball, you see that no one's there, and then you just like are nope, nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you even you even took the time to see zero touching the ball before anyone else, and still noped out. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's it's mostly funny. It's not horrible. Yeah. I mean, like zero's just kind of stuck on his own. This is it's bad that he's stuck on his own for so long. Um, just something to be aware of. Yeah, we'll fix it. See, that's that's a perfect example of like we're we're checking it, but just not processing it. Yeah, exactly. Right here, yeah. don't cut in. <laughs> Wait, don't, rewind. Don't don't cut in. Oh, I did rewind. I was cut. I was rewinding to the point where I didn't want you to cut in. Right here. Oh, you're fine. Okay, this yeah. position is fantastic. Not, but not, it's Nathan's ball. Doesn't doesn't matter like what's going gotcha. on. Gotcha. Right here, you're you're looking to move up this way. Either he's turning up. Or um, you have a guy behind you, and I'm pretty sure you know about him because you just flipped past him. Right. Um, and you turn infield. So that's that's your other thing, is if you're doing this, um, your other teammate's going to be pressuring this. They they have to. Right at this point where you decide that you're finally going to challenge, he's basically the same distance away, and your challenge is moot. <laughs> and now you're not there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And he's probably panicking slightly to hit that ball before you because he's like, your touch is horrible and I don't want it to happen. Right. This is dumb. Um, Not to be mean, but right here, he's, Z oh, Zero is doing everything correct. He's getting this guy to pull the ball off the wall and kind of take himself out of the play. And then he just leaves. You guys are here. You're ready. One of you will cut in and hit that ball or stop it on the goal line. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is it. is maximum panic. And they don't score off of it, but they almost do. That should <laughs> yeah. have been a goal. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Horrible thing to do. If you ever force your opponent to put the ball behind you, you've done what you meant to do. Leave. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
I oh, don't know what's going uh, on over here. We were just kind of playing around. Um, that ball's like I up think, field. <laughs> I think we're we're bo we're both boost chasing for the same boost, and uh, none I of them are available. All, I think it was all from the panic that was everybody was still panicking. Probably destination yeah. where the play is happening. Yeah, that's uh, that's rough. That's yeah, working on it. I don't know if tactics meant Wait to hit that back. Oh no, Nathan's just probably, good. Eh, it was probably meant to go more mid because I probably thought they were mid, and then I just screwed up the touch. Yeah. Um. Even if you had hit this perfectly lateral, in either case, the fact that you're trying to hit it lateral or back a little bit is good, like amazingly good. This is the only reason that Steam even has a chance at getting to this ball. Also, I'm just bad. Um, well, I mean, I will say that when we're when we're when we're more on our game, we're able to get um, one two passes pretty consistently. Um, but seeing the options of like a three man pass or more dynamic stuff like that, um, or like one two one passes. We, yeah, we haven't really done much of that. Right here, don't. And slow and down. also, okay. Go ahead. I was just gonna say uh, our passes haven't really been. They haven't really come through in. Uh, any of these matches. I'm seeing like where you guys think about them. The thing that's missing is when you guys look for them. So there's a lot of scenarios where you have someone on the ball and you have someone who's either moving to a similar position to like receive a pass or whatever, and then they stop looking for the pass or stop looking for the opportunity for a passing play to happen and they just leave. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's kind of like this impatience thing. There's there's definitely some some benefit to that. Like at some point, you do need to recognize the pass isn't coming and leave, but wait a little bit for that. Uh, you guys aren't gonna be hurt too bad by being upfield a little bit more, especially with how much you guys move so far backfield. Mm -hmm. um, and this is this is something that really needs to stop happening: is how far back you guys move. Because okay. in that case, in this, in, not that case, in this scenario, for example, like right here, this is a ball side rotation. That's fine. That demo happens immediately. Turn on the ball. Like you, you're you just did a half flip. You turned off ball cam. If you didn't, like work on it. But turn off ball cam. You see that no one's there. Even if it takes you a full half second to process that, turn on this ball. There's no one on your team who's going for that ball. And honestly, you have two people on their team in front of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, there's a there's a double reason to go for that ball. Um, okay. This ball's moving slow. On top of that, and you would have just beat him to this. All you all you need to worry about is getting that ball around him. You, even if it doesn't result in a goal, just get the ball around him. Put them under pressure. Make them panic. Um, and then in the case that you do have, like, let's say you did this and zero was just immediately turning up on this ball, right? You mm -hmm. either look to go this way, um, depending on the way he's angling his car, or you look to cut out this way, but like you have to pick one and it's like a harsh 90 degree angle. Awesome. Um, nice. but yeah, you pick one of these ways to go and you just hard commit to it. You flip, you flip for it, you boost, you do whatever, even if you're kind of low boost, you get out of the way. Because if you have 12 boosts in your tank, you can go pick up 24, 36, whatever. Um, if you have 120 boosts in your tank, like, don't flip, just boost. If you ever have 100 boosts or like 80 boosts in your tank and you're trying to move to a new position, try not to flip as much. It'll You'll see like a big difference in your reactivity to the play and your repositioning. Okay, interesting. Um... Was there just, like, a meltdown? <laughs> like, mentally, yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Even Tactics was confused. He was just like, why are you, why are you sitting there? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, again. Oh, no. Just half, half flip and ball chase. <laughs> Full monkey. Not All even right. kidding. Like, either that or Tactics needs to tell you he has it. One of you needs to be pressuring this. Like, even if you have no chance in hell at getting to that ball, the whole point is to not let them get control. Um, if they have control uh -huh. in their corners, it's really hard for you to challenge it without 
immediately taking someone out of the play. Um, but if you're challenging it already, like if he's just cutting in on this, and they're going to try and control it, they now have to move it around him fast enough to continue to control it. And that's at least putting some strain on their mechanics. Obviously, like some people won't have trouble with it. Like Cal is probably one of the people who would look at the person challenging him and go, ha ha. But mm -hmm. um, a lot of the time you're going to find that when you just do this, it forces them to clear it harder. And until you guys clean up rotations, that's really advantageous for you because you okay. almost always have someone back, like way too far back. And when mm -hmm. you get the enemy team to clear really hard, that's when that position is good. And so you want to force that as often as possible. And then when you guys start cleaning up your positioning and stuff, you'll notice that you make it much harder for them to clear the ball anyway. And so you guys will just be pushed up and okay. hopefully not over committing and then learning curve. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You guys yeah. We'll figure it out from there or we'll, we'll end up having another session scheduled a year from now. A year. Yeah. And then we'll learn about overloading. Yeah. I say a year because I think the last time I talked to you, not varsity was like a year ago. Definitely not. We uh, because we just formed. No, I mean um, not necessarily your guys' team, but oh, the original. Whichever one was below varsity before. That was um. Oh yeah, that was a thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> I don't know. We we definitely did one before this year. It might have been short, because you posted a whole thing in our um, coaching channel. Yeah, and I know it was with different people. No, nah, it was with us. With you guys? Yeah, and then you said, at Varsity, read the whole thing I put in Maroon Coaching. It was like four months ago, three months ago. Oh, I watched replays without you guys, and then gave you a Whoa! Of... Okay. Behind my back? You told me to. You did it. Thank you. Okay. What are you <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even remember. No, this is <laughs> Continue the replay. Oh my god. <laughs> am I losing brain cell? I definitely am. You got a steamed brain. Got him. <laughs> Wait, was this a double cheat? I'm trying to understand. It was. Okay. Holy shit. I had to look at this like 17 times to see what was wrong with it. Oh, I remember this. Yeah. Yeah, so here I'm the one that's supposed to be going for boost, but I, oh, saw, the, oh. I saw Zach go to the right, so I thought he just faked it and went for boost. I forgot I this whole challenging. Yeah, this whole CSL, um, we had to refresh Zach on kickoffs because mm -hmm. we should we just need to redo that again, but we forgot. Oh, okay. Um, um that was a thing. Oh, this is a weird way to cheat. It's not. That's not what we're doing. We don't want that. I, I'm not. I'm just hold on. I'm giving okay. the benefit of the doubt to Zach real quick. This is a weird as fuck way to cheat, but it's reasonable. Um, if you guys have a tendency to not be able to stall the ball, like you win it or you lose it, and you don't stall it very often, this makes sense to do. Um, okay, but see, the thing is, I only stall the ball. <laughs> Not not gonna like go into <laughs> whether yeah, or not we'll, you we'll, we'll figure it out. But I but, I can see what it is. Like if you're planning on winning, it's better to like grab that boost and then you can actually be in a position of field. Yeah, kind of. Okay. You can it's something we can that. mess with. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, at this point, go for saving the ball like at net tactics. Mm -hmm. Like this is a point where you just go down this way. You don't really try... Like, you're guarding this part of the net with your position yeah. at this point, and you're guarding this part of the net by just driving close to it. It also, if they shoot near post, you have mm -hmm. the opportunity to pinch it off this post. Yeah. So you don't need to go, like, back post or anything. When you cut in on this, you make it way easier for him to move the ball around you, and you open up the whole net. How do uh, Zero and I react to that if he cuts it over like that? And this isn't this isn't just because this happened. It's like in general, like if you're cheating and this scenario comes about for whatever reason, not this particular scenario where you have a double cheat weird shit, but like you have someone who's moving back and you have two people committed. Ignore that this yeah. is off of kickoff, is essentially mm -hmm. what it is. You guys are on the same side of the field. You look to go into this this uh front post or backboard. So like he's mm -hmm. gonna come here and then you're looking to like either 
Zero is looking to get past him, either by cutting in short or like following up his touch as he gets closer to net or whatever. Um, so that he doesn't have to worry about like this particular spot on the net. Or if for some reason this gets banged high into the top corner, Zero can try and cut that off. But he's he's looking to cut all of that off until one of you call him off. Steam, you're looking to go through midfield. Okay. Um, because you can't defend the net, but you can stop follow-ups. And that's what's important for you. So like in this case, in this scenario, if like he just went back, he'd be cutting in on it right now. Zach could just move through the net. And then you're out in midfield. And so if he bounces this off the wall, you're looking to either follow that up or he's looking to chase it and you're looking to move upfield with him. Mm hmm. Okay. And then zero is your third man and everything's kosher. Sick. There's other ways that can play out depending on how quickly you guys react to certain things, but. Ooh. We'll, we'll come across those scenarios down the road, or you'll see them in replays. <laughs> I, just, I just don't know how else to react to that. No, it's fair. Not that like this is bad at this point, because this ball just... It, it works, but it shouldn't have. Is just like absolutely skied. It's a back pass. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. Like, <laughs> oh my god. Even <laughs> even if he turned in midfield, he could just do the same exact thing without this being the only yeah. scenario where that's good. <laughs> like, holy. I think I'm late to play with my teammates. Yeah, this is going for a while. If you need to cut it, no, no problem. No, we're we're gonna finish this out. I'm just gonna stop heckling too much okay i mean like we can just watch this um and then talk about like stuff what what the the main takeaways are and one of them is zero needs to stop going for 100 pads like 110 percent that is happening too much in a way that is detrimental to all of you um that was that was actually like very good rotation until zero slowed down Rip. And holy crap, that panic is so real. Um, but yeah, Zero needs to stop going for 100 pads because it's taking him out of position and he's just kind of boosting everywhere. Um, I'm not actually entirely sure how he's moving around the field this much while doing absolutely nothing. It's kind of impressive how bad it is. Um, but... The him just generally slowing down will help him with car control. It'll help him get better pacing and spacing with you guys, and it'll also stop him from starving himself and you guys constantly. Um, I'm pretty sure there are plenty of scenarios where you guys could have gotten boost, but Zero has picked up two or three hundred pads in the span of like 15 seconds, and they're not respawning. Um, mm -hmm. The next big thing is look to pressure midfield. Like as a team, you guys need to look at look when you can pressure midfield and when you can't and make efforts on those decisions. Um, don't be afraid to like go a little bit wide for the ball. When you cut short, you're straining your mechanics to get a good touch when you could have just set yourself up for success anyway. Um, and stuff like this. Like try to be more aware of where each other are on the field in general. Um, I think that's, like, you guys have a lot of the right tools, and you pick up the information. It's very clear. Like, earlier we saw an example of it. You pick up the information. Holy shit, I have 12 pings. Um, of, like, where to be on the field. It's just, you need to start using it. And even if it slows you down for a bit, that's fine. Like, decision making is the most important thing in threes to me. Um, because you can position all you want, but if you're not making decisions fast enough, your position doesn't matter because you're not deciding what to do. You're hesitating, you're slowing down, you're leaving the position because you make the wrong decision or you take too long to make a decision and you're kind of just drifting through the position. Um, the other thing is, is like when, when it comes to mechanics, um, if you make a decision quickly and confidently, even if you mess up the mechanics, 
it's very clear what you're doing to your teammates. Like, mm. abundantly clear. Like, if you mess up, they could possibly cover your ass. If you don't mess up, they could possibly follow you up. Because it's very clear what you're doing when you make decisions quickly and just do them. Um, okay. The, the last big thing with decision making is that it helps a lot with spacing and you want it to be second hand for that because when you are moving around the field trying to find positions or what have you it's important that you do that without too much hesitation um obviously there will always be some like when you're reading the play or just stupid shit happens and you're really unsure what to do like yeah there's gonna be some hesitation that's just part of discovering those new decisions and like those new opportunities from new positions. Um, but being able to do that quickly is what helps you move around the field quickly and is what helps mm. you do things like what Tactic's doing right here, where he just like immediately knows he's going to, or sorry, not Tactic, Steam, knows exactly what he's going to do. He's going to cut in on this. He knows he's going to cut in on this from that first boost pad. Um... But Tact doesn't know. Uh, it's it's stuff like that that proactivity where you take away the opportunity for other people to follow up the ball that's really important with decision making, and it doesn't necessarily require mechanics. And it like really doesn't in, even into like low GC. You see people who are just really good at making decisions and really good at like positioning, and that's it. They suck at everything. They miss the ball just as much as a champ one or two. And some of them don't even know how to fast aerial, and it's hilarious. Ooh. Yeah. But they get nice. to, they get up there because they're decisive. Right. Um, and that's kind of what this this team is lacking as a whole, is just decisiveness. Also, that decision, yeah. that, that, that decisiveness will help alleviate some panic. Because Definitely. Because you feel more confident in everything you're doing when you are decisive. Um, and you'll still have panic sometimes. That's that's something that just happens. Um, sometimes shit gets too chaotic. Yep. But yeah, I think that's Sweet. most of it. Yeah, that's really good. And then if there's anything else, um, I'll comment or DM you or whatever. Yeah. Uh, we'll check it out and send it Zero's way. Um, but thank you so much for the review. Mm -hmm. Super helpful. Um, yeah. Sorry, we made you miss your thing. Oh no, I'm I'm gonna go join them now. They're just gonna be salty with me. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah, we 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 really appreciate it. Yeah, no, no it's problem. gonna be good. No. Uh, but yeah, just feel free to DM me stuff, or like if you think you need to talk about a certain situation or whatever, we can always talk it through in text, and we can try and figure it out that way. Awesome. Well, good luck with your stuff. Have a great night, and thanks yeah, again. Yeah, you too. See you guys. Peace out.